Hello, um, welcome to today's class. Today we're mixing kind of um, a little bit of yin and a little bit of flow, just to kind of help um, as a way to soften, as a way to become present and to link them out. So we'll start. Um, and since we are doing quite a few yin poses, that means you might need kind of a little bit more props than normal. So some towels or blankets. If you, if you happen to have bolsters, those are always really handy. If not, you can kind of wrap up some towels, put them in a pillowcase, or maybe use some couch cushions. Those work really well. And some blocks if you have them, or maybe some sturdy books. We're just going to start out first in really any comfortable um, resting pose, so savasana. If you'd like to have a towel or blanket and just have the very bottom edge of it folded up and then place that just under the natural curvature of your neck if that feels comfortable to you. Or you can maybe place a towel kind of rolled up underneath your knees and then just let your feet fall open the length of the mat, bring your palms up. And just give yourself a moment to let your body rest here. Let your body soften into the mat. So not any changes in breath. Just letting your body find that mat and become really soft. See if maybe you start to draw into your body by noticing your breath. So taking your awareness and first, just watching the breath as it enters your nostrils, following that breath, maybe watching if your chest or your belly rises, and just your natural breath. Continue watching the exhale. Maybe you notice the temperature difference. And as you're watching your natural breath, see if you notice anywhere in the body that softens on each exhale. Maybe you even become aware of your heartbeat here. And maybe if it feels good to you to just really exhale, starting first with that exhale to let all that breath out. And then slowly begin to expand the breath. So maybe not super deep, just a little bit deeper. You notice your belly inflates a little bit bigger. Just starting to bring that breath a little bit deeper. Maybe that exhale has more of a release to it. And now really begin to expand the breath let that inhale be broad and deep. The space between your hip points expands, your waist expands. Let the breath travel upward into the rib cage, opening up the collarbones. And as you exhale, feel the belly soften first. Maybe raise your jaw. And just notice what this deepening of breath feels like in your body. Maybe there's a softness between your shoulder blades, softness in your face. Each exhale, maybe there's a different area to notice. Maybe you <clears throat> sense that the inhale feels more expansive than the last. You've create some space somewhere, or it's easier to pull in on this next inhale than it was the one before. Today, it's all about 
awareness and starting to draw that awareness inside to your inner landscape. And I made this class today because I was talking with somebody about yoga and they had said, um, or we're talking kind of beyond yoga and just say, everyone says to find that space of stillness and listen, be still and listen, but then what? And I thought that was really interesting that we do often say, just be with yourself, allow that space, get still, get quiet, but there isn't a lot of direction for what that could be like. And it's always going to be different. But I thought today, especially with some yin and some yang, talking about how we can really listen. What does that look like? What are options? What does that feel like? How do you even get to the space of listening? So as you continue to breathe, continue to watch that inhale. Just noticing the ribs, noticing the belly. See if you can't move that breath to your back, your low back, the space between your shoulder blades. And as you exhale, if you can't coax a little bit more softening in the body. And in yoga, there's eight limbs of yoga. And the first four are kind of building up to kind of these great meditation type practices. So the last limb of yoga is known as samadhi, or this oneness of divine, this state of bliss. It's this great listening, being able to really hear and communicate. Yoga means to yoke or unite. Some say with self, some say with divine, some say those are one and the same things. It doesn't matter, whatever that is to you. But it's not a one-time thing. It's a continual event. And so today, just starting to focus in on that once we're alone and we've made that space to free up all those distractions, then what do we do? So taking a few more deep breaths, really fill up, see if you can't draw the breath as if it could really draw all the way down to your toes, all the way up to the crown of the head. And as you exhale, there's a drawing back, pulling in from those spaces to relieve and exhale out. So if you have already brought an intention with you or a mantra, go ahead and let that kind of draw up into your mind, up into your body. If you haven't, maybe it's, I am listening. I am willing to listen. I am connected to myself, to the divine. I create space for listening. Then as you're ready, maybe on that next inhale, take a big deep inhale in, moving those arms overhead, pointing toes on the length of the mat. As you exhale, see if you can't just let go, release. Let go of that intention, that mantra. So we're not holding on too tight, but just allowing whatever is in this space to just be. Gently drawing knees into chest, giving them a nice little squeeze, maybe a rock from side to side if that feels good to you on your low back.
And then keeping that right leg hugged in, you can just put sole the left foot to the mat or dive all the way down the length of the mat. And then start making some circles into the knee. to get into this hip socket. So there's kind of a lot of getting into the hips. Sometimes we store, you can reverse the circling, whatever feels good to you. You can make these big or small, but lots of breath as if you can infuse that breath to the space of your hip here. Today kind of getting into our body tends to Store and part of that listening is part of where we're storing that energy and stress. And so then bring the sole of your right foot towards the inner thigh of your left leg if that's comfortable. You can kind of find any length. So if that inner thigh is a little too uncomfortable, the sole of the foot up that high, feel free to bring it down to the knee or maybe just the calf whatever feels good to you. So starting out in fallen tree here. And if this is really intense, you can feel free to bring a block, maybe propping it up underneath that thigh. But this, we do want to feel a stretch here. So when we talk about yin yoga, we are looking for that deep and slow. Um, it can be an intense stretch, but we don't want pain. So maybe as you're here, you can slowly inch that block closer to the knee. So maybe it starts really close to your hip. And as you're laying here, letting your breath and gravity do some work. So we don't want any pain. We don't want to clench up. When the body starts to feel too much intense pain, it will actually tense up. And what we're looking for is a release, a softening. So maybe just starting out with a block and then allow your hands to maybe come to cactus, arms can be overhead. Deep inhale, let that low belly really bal balloon, like open and puff up on the side of your waist and your back body, up into the ribs, up into the collarbone. And as you exhale, maybe release your jaw. Each breath, maybe imagine it going right into that space where you're feeling this, into that hip crease, to that inner thigh, wherever it is that you're feeling the most intense stretch. This is kind of a open and vulnerable position too. So maybe it's just allowing yourself to be in this position here, feeling safe. So using the breath, Pranayama, our life force, and directing breath, connecting to it, focusing on it is one step. When we create space to be still. So just allow yourself to focus your attention on that broadening and expanding of breath. That exhale, releasing, release the low belly, release any tension in shoulders. Maybe you notice on the exhale that tension release in the inner thigh. Yin poses are longer holds where we can draw our attention to whatever we need in this space. So I think they're good, especially for this practice today, to balance these longer holds with some movement to really draw inward today. So really allow your mind settle 
on breath, on feeling every feeling as you stretch, every feeling as you flow. Taking two more deep breaths here, exhale. And then maybe using your hands, bringing it to the outer thigh to start to help bring that knee back up to center. So almost using your arm to manually draw that knee back up, draw that knee to chest, give it a nice little squeeze. You can make some circles if that feels good or even circle out the ankle here. Then keeping that knee into chest, bring that right arm out to the side, and then gently draw that knee over to the left as the right shoulder blade stays down on the mat. Nice little twist. Gaze can go over to the right fingertips. Big deep inhale. As you exhale, soften the shoulder blades, soften your face. As you're ready, gently come back towards center, and then we'll switch that out. So draw the left knee into chest. You can bring right so the foot to the mat or extend all the way down. And we're just gonna make some circles. Maybe they start out small, circle in the knee to get into the hip flexor, just starting to activate some synovial joint fluid here. Maybe those circles start to get a little deeper, larger. And then moving to this side, fallen tree. So bringing the um, sole of your left foot, maybe to the upper inner thigh of the right leg. Maybe it's the knee, maybe it's a little lower on the calf, whatever feels good to you. And again, you can use a rolled up blanket, you can use a block. If this is really intense at first, maybe having the block closer to the hip, and then as you're kind of softening into this pose, as you're breathing, you can move whatever it is you have underneath closer towards your knee. So letting that gravity and time slowly open up into that hip. Arms can be overhead if that feels good. You can cactus, and if, if you need to move anything you have underneath you, under your neck, feel free. Draw that breath, that three-part breath. So think of the inhale first, expanding the space between your hips and then traveling up your spine, expanding the diaphragm just underneath your ribs and your rib cage gets big and puffy. Your back body puffs up all the way to your collarbone, top of your head. As you exhale, the belly softens, then the chest softens, collarbone softens. When we talk about breath, it's such a great anchor because it's always with us. It's always able to connect to. And Three deep breaths has been proven to show some pretty deep physiological effects by stimulating vagus nerve, sending messages to the brain that we're okay. So it's deeply grounding, deeply calming, allowing our parasympathetic nervous system to start to kick in. So our sympathetic nervous system is what just runs keeps us going for our flight, enables us to deal with stress, deal with trauma, and that parasympathetic is that healing mode, resting, digesting. 
and our resiliency to go back and forth to settle into that healing mode as quickly as we can. So when we're still giving our bodies these opportunities, even if it's only for three deep breaths, little spaces throughout your day to connect. Sometimes we need to carve out that big space of being still, but not every day do we get those. So then just a little connection to breath, whatever we can get. Really listening onto that exhale. Where else can you soften? Maybe it's the tops of your shoulders have started to tense up. Soften those down on exhale. Soften your throat, your face, your eyes, jaw. Letting the breath infuse into that stretch. So maybe imagining as if you could inhale right to your hip, your inner thigh. And as you exhale, the exhale softens somewhere in that space. Taking two more deep inhales, cleansing exhales. And then using your hand to actually help draw that knee up and bring it in, getting that nice squeeze into the hip. So feeling that contraction to the hip, maybe circling out your ankle if that feels good. If you'd like, if it feels better, instead of just that squeeze to circle again, go ahead. And then gently bringing that left arm out like a like an airplane wing and we'll draw that left knee over to the right, keeping that left shoulder blade towards the mat. Gaze can go over to the left fingertips. Big deep inhale as you exhale, let your body land, all of your body soften towards the mat. Maybe you're hovering your hip, you're hovering shoulder blade, just let your entire body softened down to the mat. Slowly come back towards center. Once again, drawing that right knee into the chest. Another little squeeze. Maybe if it feels good to lift your chest. Squeeze here. Little rock from side to side. And then whichever side feels easiest to breathe, go ahead and pull over to that side gently. Pressing yourself up, coming to a seated position. So starting out First, we'll add a little movement to this and then we'll get into the yin hold. So having one leg in front of the other and feel free here, you can always roll up a towel or a blanket, bringing that behind you, sitting on the edge of that. Bringing hands to the top of your knees, we're just gonna do sort of like some seated cat cow. So if you were to inhale, bring that chest forward, Chin can lift. As you exhale, use the hands on your knees like a fulcrum. Draw your mid back towards the wall or whatever is behind you, separating your shoulder blades. Inhale, soup it up. 
Exhale. Inhale once again. And then just maybe making some circling here of the torso so your sits bones stay rooted down, circling just your torso. Again, separating shoulder blades once you go through the back. Big, deep inhales. And let the belly go. And reverse the circling, starting to get into the spine. Maybe even starting to notice here where there's some tension and tightness. Take an inhale, bring those arms up overhead. As you exhale, let the left hand drift down, reach the right hand over. Keep both sits bones on the ground. Opening up the side body, inhale back up through center. Exhale, the right hand floats down left, hand reaches over. And just allow yourself to kind of sway back and forth with your breath, keeping both sits bones rooted so that the top half just feels nice and flowy. And let that spine go. Start to notice here maybe where you feel some ease. Notice the ribs expanding, maybe sensing in the neck, then come back up to center, and we're going to get into the next yin pose, the next longer hold, um, so square. So there's a couple ways that you can get into this pose. I like to bring a bolster. You can also use just a... Um, rolled up towel or blanket. So kind of having one leg, so left leg kind of drawn in back behind it, right leg on the top, flexing into that right foot so it's kind of square. So it is like a square. So another option for this, you can remove this block, is to have that lower leg, so this left foot flexed, lower leg out in front, and it's stacking here. Um, on the top, sometimes you can bring blocks oops, or blankets, kind of having that um, stability, that kind of space right here. I just find this to be a little bit more comfortable, but, but I <clears throat> also like to fold forward. So if you kind of just like to sit up, then maybe having the legs stacked on top of each other, I feel this bring some tension out of the hip crease for me here and allows a little bit more space to open, but feel free. Here, you can even um, bring both legs out in front if having this is a lot of flexion on the knee that's closest to you. So just going with what's ever easiest, most comfortable for your body. And um, just remember that we are kind of looking for a little bit of stretch in yin. So in yin yoga, we're looking for those longer holds. We're softening. Um, we're not contracting muscle. We're looking for length in that connective tissue. So as much as you can release the hold of the muscle and allow that lengthening to occur. So with that right leg up on a bolster or wherever you're at, Feel the sits bones root to the ground. Feel the crown of the head lift up. And then maybe there's a gentle folding forward. And this is where I also like to use some blocks and give myself some levels to go to. So I play some blocks. Once I find that first stretch, then maybe letting the head release down to the block. And then as we're here in this hold um, and infusing that breath, I like to kind of then lower the blocks. So giving yourself some space and doors to go through here. So find that pose for you. Feel your shoulder blades easing down your back. And infusing that breath. So bring that big, deep inhale. Let that breath travel down, almost as if you could Draw the breath up from the floor here and expand the spine in either direction. 
And each exhale, see if there's somewhere that you're not holding tension. A lot of times we don't realize until we exhale, oh, I've been drawing into this hip. See if you can't let go. And that's the other part here. When we find that space of stillness, when we carve out time to be still, or when we finally have that space to be still, getting really curious. So maybe it's here in this yoga pose, where am I holding tension? Am I hovering? Am I going in in my belly? Am I constricting somewhere that I can find some ease? Maybe it's asking the questions, how do I feel? Sometimes our times of stillness and quiet isn't always in yoga. It could be in your car. It could be, I don't know, maybe the one time of peace you get when you get to take a shower and just connecting to breath and then asking, how do I feel? Draw that inhale deep up from the earth as if you could breathe through your tailbone, up through your tailbone. Let that breath infuse your whole body. And as you exhale, there's a softening and releasing or willingness to. Maybe you just notice that and it might be hard to actually release, but you can sense it, you can feel it, and you've become curious about it. And then that opens up a willingness. We're not forcing ourselves through any doors into the stretch, just a slow stillness with this. especially when we work into the hips, that tends to be an area where a lot of people can store emotional stress. And so you might notice a lot of feelings here and that's okay, just keep breathing and keeping willing to let them be. Take another couple of deep inhales and exhales here. Each exhale, releasing tension, soften the tops of your shoulders, your jaw. And when you release those other areas, you might notice that hips start to soften. No pain. In fact, if you feel pain, back off of that pain. Find a softness. And as you're ready, on an exhale, slowly, slowly, slowly walk that torso back up. Gently bring that knee to chest one more time. You can even circle out the ankle. It was kind of in that one position, so circling out here. And then we're going to do a little um, in-between a little bit of some kind of fun hip mobility thing. So since we have that right leg up, and you can feel free to use the hand here, but just kind of a little back and forth to get into the knee a second here. So straightening.
like dirty room. Like there's a mess everywhere. Hands can be behind you. So, or hands out in front using that core. So either way, even if the hands are back behind you, think of that drawing up from the pelvic floor, up from the tailbone, all the way through the crown of the head. And then just bringing that knee back behind. So it might be kind of hard at first. It's just this back and forth motion as if you were kind of bringing those uh, legs back to mermaid legs and however far. So even if it's just up here, if it's not all the way with that knee back behind, that's okay. You can try this out without your hands behind. So just getting a little core hip movement here. Kind of stirring up some stuff a little bit too. Every time we get into that core, it's always nice to stir up one more. And then leave it, maybe if it's out to the side, if this feels uncomfortable on the knee, just go ahead and extend the leg out. Whatever feels good to you. Taking a nice little length up here, maybe a little turning of the ribs. If that doesn't feel good, you can always just windshield wiper the legs. Lots of options. We're just trying to get some movement into the hips. Wherever you're at, come back towards center. And then we're going to set up just like we were before, but the other leg. So now left leg. Again, feel free to stack here so the right leg can be a right foot flex, <clears throat> almost into a 90, and then bringing that left leg on top. Some people like to have um, the ankle of the uh, ankle kind of below. I find this to be not as comfortable, a little bit more difficult for me um, to find the ability to soften. So I like to bring a bolster out in front, left leg on top, still square. Um, <clears throat> again, if the flexion is a lot, you can bring that to the top. You can even extend it out as well. And so then we're just kind of working on one leg, um, giving this knee some space on the opposite leg. So whatever feels most comfortable to you, you can sit up on top of the edge of a blanket as well. So again, we're kind of finding that um, slight intensity, that little bit of effort um, to be able to open, but we're not causing pain. We don't want to cause pain and then we stiffen up, we store stress someplace else. So feeling Comfortable in that position, sit bones rooted down, take a nice big inhale, grow long through the crown of the head. And then again, if you um, keep those sit bones down and start to walk that torso over to where you feel that nice stretch, maybe you use some blocks here, let your forehead rest. And then as we're breathing, kind of progressing, finding that release of tension in the hip. Yeah. Um, it's also great working some uh, traditional Chinese medicine meridian lines. So as we're working like gallbladder, kind of creating these nice openings, these fluid movements of energy. So we think about <clears throat> what do we do next? Be still and listen and then what? Um, sometimes it's when we're getting curious, it's also about our surroundings. So what could make this better? What can make this easier for me? Um, sometimes it's a candle being able to focus on that. Sometimes it smells yourself, that space. Maybe it's a sound, maybe it's music to be able to listen in and feel your most comfortable, but getting curious about that as well. Remember to connect to that deep breath again. Inhale, almost as if you could breathe that breath up from the earth. Exhale. What if I made this slight little adjustment with the block? How does that feel in my body? 
does it make me more comfortable to listen if I am in a darker room? Can I bring my attention to self easier in the mornings or in the evenings? Getting curious about paying attention to our own self. Each exhale, find that letting go, that softening of tension, or even an awareness of the tension and a willingness. Maybe you notice you're carrying all this tension in your low back or in your hip, or maybe it's even in the right shoulder as you're in this space, and each exhale, just a willingness to redirect and soften there. Seeing if you can't release any holes in the muscle, especially if you're used to doing a different um, practice. Oftentimes we're energizing that muscle, we're drawing in, but here in the end, we just are easing. We're asking that muscle to turn off. Allow yourself to become curious in the space of stillness. Curious with your breath. What if I open my jaw? What if I sigh in my exhale? How does that feel? How does that change this or not change this? Taking a couple more breaths here in this space. Then on your next exhale, use the hands, slowly, slowly work the torso. You feel that yin, woo, feeling it's always in the yin that you definitely become aware that you are stretching. Draw that left knee to chest circle out the ankle. Okay, maybe some stretching some straightening and bending doesn't need to be perfectly straight inhale press the sits bone into the ground inhale up from the pelvic floor to keep that spine nice and long and then we're going to do that little mobility kind of swing so if you'd like to have the hands behind you but still pressing and lifting up through the core then let that knee kind of swing around and you'll notice it's a little uh you feel that tension so maybe that knee doesn't come all the way out if you'd like, you can bring the hands forward, drawing up from the core to keep that stability and bring that knee back as far as you can. So you're kind of hovering it over the mat bring it as far as you can and then back forward. So make sure that we keep our hips nice and mobile, drawing up using the core. So lifting up from the pelvic floor. And again, if that is just not fun at all, you can keep that lengthening outward so maybe just a little swing and then out. Bring it back in. And little, <clears throat> little smaller movements can be just as impactful and <clears throat> on our body. So last time, maybe this time you either leave it extended or drop back. Take a nice big inhale, lift up. A little twist 
We're going to get back into some spine stuff, but this also offers a nice little stretch in the hip flexor if you have your knee behind you or a nice little stretch behind the leg if your leg is extended. Again, you can windshield wipe your knees here. And then we're all going to come into table. <clears throat> Starting to get a little bit more mobility in spine. So if you happen to have a harder floor or maybe some healing happening in your knees, feel free to bring a uh, blanket in your knees. Also in those wrists, um, if you're feeling any pain in your wrist, go ahead and bring a block underneath. You can even walk the hands a little bit more forward from the shoulders. If they're directly under the shoulders, there's just kind of a deeper angle here, but or a sharper angle if you walk them a little bit more forward, we're kind of opening up that wrist crease slightly. So here, gently from that low body in and that crown of the head is forward, finding that neutral sign at first. Then we're gonna inhale, lift up those hips, let that belly soften down, let the heart shine through the shoulders, chin comes up last. As you exhale, tuck the tailbone under, draw the navel to the spine, press the mat away, chin tucks. Following your breath, connecting back to that breath. So adding that movement to breath here. Each exhale, draw the hips under. Let the exhale, let the breath move you. Let that inhale start to open up. And then we're going to add a little bit more movement to this. So as you inhale, let those hips kind of slide back. Maybe they come all the way back if that feels good to you. Let those hands reach forward. And as you exhale, start to lift up, draw the navel in, kind of rounding a little bit more forward. Inhale, hips almost are kind of gently dragging you backwards. They don't need to touch your heels if that doesn't feel good. Just let the spine go. Find a little bit of movement here. Bring yourself back to that breath. Each time when we're meditating or when we're in a space of stillness and we can redirect because that monkey mind happens, you start thinking about what you were supposed to do yesterday, what you have to do today. But each redirection back to breath, back to self, back to whatever it is that you're focusing on in that stillness is like building up a muscle. It doesn't happen overnight. I think a lot of people think they're horrible at meditating or yoga or being still because they think they have to think of nothing, but that's never going to happen. Well, I, I'm not that that's never going to, that, that doesn't usually happen. Our minds aren't built like that, but when we redirect, we're training our brains. All right, next one, come forward, and we're going to tuck the toes. Just kind of take a moment to feel into the toes, maybe a little back and forth there with the toes tucked. Exhale, waving the spine. Spinal flossing is really great. Um, it not only helps that somatic connection, that mind-body connection, but it just kind of helps to loosen any kind of stiffening, like stickiness around maybe some nerves. And then on that next time that you drop backward, we're going to come all the way to downward dog. So send those hips high, press toes into the mat, press hands into the mat. You can keep the knees bent at first, kind of finding that nice space for your shoulders so they're not up too far by your ears and not too far down your back so your ribs flare, but a nice neutral position and straightening into the knees. Heels often towards the mat, they do not need to touch. Just take a little moment. Big deep inhale, cleansing exhale. Then take a look forward. Take an inhale, take a nice deep bend in the knees. As you exhale, bring the feet directly underneath the hips. Keep your knees nice and bent forward fold. Let that head and neck relax. Soften, maybe moving the head from side to side or making circles with it. Then as you're ready on your next inhale, take a nice lengthening inhale. 
and bring hands to the shins if that feels better. Bring the weight back into your heels, back into your hips. As you exhale, soften into the knees. Keep that length in the spine as you unhinge. Exhale it up. Inhale, bring those arms up overhead. Exhale, bring those hands to heart center. So we're gonna do some standing salutations. And think of it almost like a moving meditation. So redirecting here as you go through, I'll cue the first couple and then just move through. And if you're not on my exact breath, it's okay. Just find a connection to your breath and then use this kind of as a moving meditation. If your mind starts to wander, redirect, come back to this movement, really noticing in how each breath feels, how each movement feels. So if you're ready, we're gonna inhale, reach up. As you exhale, soften into the knees, forward fold, deepen in those knees. Take an inhale to find a half lift. Hands can come up to the shins if that feels better, stay down to the floor. As you exhale, soften into the knees, unhinge here. So use your core to bring you up. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands come to your heart center. Inhale it up. Exhale, bend those knees forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Find that length in the spine. Exhale, soften into the knees. Weight goes back. Exhale, unhinge. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to heart center. I'll start to minimize my voice. Reach up, forward fold, half lift, exhale it up, inhale, reach up, exhale, hands to heart center, and then use your breath here. Go through this moving meditation as you like. Just a couple more. Maybe you're adding your own reminders, touches to certain parts of your body. And wherever you're at, we'll all meet back up in Tadasana, hands in the heart center, just relax by yourself. Forward and just notice your, notice your body. Notice discomfort, comfort. Becoming aware of sensations in your feet, in your shoulders. See if you can't stack your shoulders over your hips, draw your shoulder blades down your back. Then bring those ears over your shoulders, feeling yourself upright and tall. 
And then take an inhale again, bring those arms up overhead, reaching the ribs up as the shoulder blades draw down your back. As you exhale, deep bend in the knees, four fold. Take an inhale, find a half lift, and then place those hands on the ground. So I'm gonna sweep back to downward facing dog. Take a big deep inhale as if you could breathe up from the earth. As you exhale, open your mouth. Release that breath. Two more of those. Stick your tongue out. One more. On your next inhale, come up high on those toes. We're going to wave the spine forward, softening those knees down. Soften your body all the way down to the mat. Bring those elbows directly underneath the shoulders. So coming into Sphinx pose. If you like, you can have a bolster or a blanket kind of propping up the chest. So the chest can rest on top, elbows under, uh, over the top of those. Draw your shoulder blades down your back, soften into the legs. So oftentimes you'll hear me cue in more of your practices to press the toenails in to light up the legs. Just let them go here. Wave those hips from side to side. But lift that heart upwards. Draw those elbows gently towards the back, shoulder blades gliding down your back. And a couple more of those lion breaths here. So take a deep breath in. As you exhale, stick out your tongue and roar it out. <sighs> Two more. <sighs> One more of those. Deep inhale, exhale out of an open mouth. <sighs> then bringing those hands back by your mat. Go ahead, press up. Bring those knees back underneath you. So we're going to come back into um, our next DM pose. So if you'd like to have a towel <coughs> or a blanket folded up, placing your seat on the edge of that, and then extending your legs wide, as wide as feels comfortable to you. You don't have to be sitting on top of that if that doesn't feel comfortable. So we're going to set up for... <clears throat> with kind of a wide-legged fold. So once again, we want to feel a stretch. Um, we want to feel kind of that intensity, but moving slowly. So <clears throat> typically, if we were in a traditional like Hatha class or maybe a vinyasa, we would flex those feet, engage all the muscles, lifting up through the core, but we want to soften the legs. Still pressing down, into the sits bones and lifting up so that spinal column is strong. Maybe a little bit of pulling up through the pelvic floor, but we wanna release all the tension in the legs. So no muscles are pulling in into the legs. And again, you can always have some blocks, especially if your hamstrings are particularly tight, bringing the blocks underneath your knees <clears throat> it's also kind of helpful if you're going to do that to be sitting up on the edge of the blanket. It creates a little bit more space in your hip flexors that way. And then I just kind of like to set everything up in front and just start a gentle fold, whatever feels good. Again, letting your forehead rest and maybe palms up in front of you. Let your shoulder blades glide down your back. And as we are breathing here, I start to kind of then dismantle my tower as that softening happens into the legs. Like you're opening doors. Look at that breath. Drawing up through the crown of the head as you exhale, release the tension, release some hold, some grip that maybe you have I think oftentimes <clears throat> it sounds good to get still and listen. Um, but if in the reality, it's a very difficult thing. Many of us have become unattuned to what we want, how we feel, that connection to ourself. 
seems really distant. And so when it gets quiet, when we need to listen, <clears throat> we're out of practice. We haven't been doing it and it feels really uncomfortable. So becoming detached is a mode of safety. It's a trauma response and it has kept us safe maybe. But maybe it's not useful so much any longer. So making sure that we feel comfortable. And softening in, give ourselves time. Let that exhale find a little bit more softening. It's okay to feel, um, to let your head kind of soften here. So a lot of times <clears throat> we want to find length here in the spine, but it's okay to let that head kind of drop and feel along the spine as well, opening up some of those meridian lines, not just on the inner thigh, I think it's that skull bladder, but when we work on that back line as well, opening up that kidney lung meridian, Soften your shoulder blades, soften your face. To give yourself a couple more breaths into this pose. Allowing every sensation to be felt, allowing it to <clears throat> not overcome you by connecting to breath. Realizing that breath is anchor, breath is deep, and breath is alchemizing. Inhaling big and broad, exhaling, letting go. Even if that lion's breath is needed to feel a little release, stick out that tongue, make a sigh, make a noise, make a roar. And when you're ready on an exhale, use your hands, pressing the torso back up nice and slowly. Moving really slowly here, maybe even using the hands to bring those knees back up. Bring those knees into chest, give them a nice little squeeze. And we're gonna come right back into a nice little flow just to kind of soften what we did there. So coming back into table, moving slowly, and then ending up and downward facing dog. So if you need to take a moment to kind of sit back on those heels first, slowly, slowly. There's no rush, fan out your fingers, find your way to downward facing dog. 
As you're ready, take an inhale, lift up that right leg. You can open up the hips, so bending into the knee, bringing that right foot towards the left, but keeping your chest square to the mat. As you exhale, we're going to soften the knee, soften the elbows, and then press the mat away, bring that knee in. Right foot behind the right hand, bend into the back knee, take an inhale, gather up some length of the spine as you exhale like that. Unhinging from the torso, coming into high crescent. Inhale, reach those arms up. As you exhale, cactus those arms. Inhale, reach them up. Exhale, both hands on either side of the right foot. Step it back to downward facing dog. Inhale, bring that left foot up. Bend into the knee, draw that left foot towards the right, but keeping the hips square to the mat. Nice little opening in the hips. As you exhale, soften the knee, soften the elbow straight back, press the mat away, left foot behind left hand. Inhale to gather up some length. As you exhale, you can bend that back leg so you're using your core, the pelvic floor, to draw the torso up. Inhale it up. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale it back up. Exhale, both hands on either side. Send that left foot back. Take a nice deep inhale. Wave the spine forward so we're now into high plank. As you exhale, bring those heels to the left. Deep bend in the knees. Send those seat back. Chest stay square. Nice little side opening. Inhale it back to downward facing dog. Exhale, release the breath. Inhale. Wave that spine forward, coming back into high plank. As you exhale, heels drift to the right. Deep in the knees, seat goes to the right. Press the chest back. Inhale it back to that high plank. Exhale, bring that right knee down. You can bring a block, placing the right hand on top of the block, or just bring that right hand a little bit more forward than the shoulder. We're going to open it up like a supported um, side plank. Inhale, reach that left arm up. As you exhale, maybe if it feels good to you to lift that left leg, draw that left heel towards your seat. Take hold of the um, top of the foot with the left hand and then open up the chest. Or maybe it just feels good to reach here, whichever is best to you, that half moon, Pose, or maybe just that big deep side stretch. Exhale, release. Bring that left knee down. Then we're going to switch sides. Left knee comes down. You can have that left hand on top of a block or just a slightly forward from the shoulder. Extend the right leg, open it up so that supported side plank. Maybe you this stretch here just feels really good and you like to kind of marinate in that stretch. Or you can lift up the right leg, bring that right heel towards your seat, take hold of just the back of the foot, kind of gently drawing it towards your seat, gently pressing those hips forward, opening up the chest. Exhale, bring it back down into table. Maybe one last little circling or swing of those hips. You can bring the knees closer towards center and just kind of a little rocking back and forth, getting into the hips. And then bringing those knees out wide. So we're gonna have one last little hold here in child's pose. So if you'd like to have a blanket underneath your knees, so knees come wide, toes, come together. So lots of options for you. You can reach, reach, reach those hands forward. Lower your forehead either to the mat or maybe to a block. You can leave your forehead on the mat or a block and conversely bring those hands back by your side, kind of opening up the shoulders. And Another option is to reach the hands in between the knees, kind of reaching back um, past the feet and kind of like curling up here. So it's a compression into the hip socket 
and wherever feels best for you with those hands. Take a big deep inhale, feel the low belly press against your thighs, feel that upper back, the back body just kind of puffs up as you exhale, it blankets and you can soften into the exhale. When we think of being still and listening, it sounds very easy, it sounds very peaceful, but when we are faced with the then what, it does become hard and sticking with it, it's vidyaya, that effort, that staying, when maybe we're feeling too much like to get out of stillness or maybe it's frustrating because we don't feel anything we don't hear anything we can't have this connection that we so deeply want with ourselves, with divine with whatever it is but if we just kind of stay with it just as if that reconnecting the mind re coming back to this space of stillness, it creates this pathway, this neural pathway of listening to our body. When we continue to be curious, when we continue to anchor into breath, we're creating a road, a familiarity to that road. We have to stick with it. We have to persevere, reconnecting back the mind, the body, allowing that relationship to rekindle. Couple more breaths here. Connect back to that breath, your anchor, that deep inhale. Feel the low belly press against your thighs or maybe just soften into the space between your thighs. Space behind your heart opens up and then as you exhale, the whole body sinks a little bit deeper towards the mat. wherever you're at, maybe bringing those hands forward. Nice little stretch, bringing your gaze forward and slowly, slowly unfurling from this, we're gonna stretch <clears throat> one little stretch into the hip flexor. So maybe you'd like a few cat cows first, just because we were holding that position that you can even add that movement back and forth here, if that feels good to you. And then bring the whole body down once again into that sphinx pose, just to be able to open up ooh, those hip flexors. So you can bring a bolster or the blanket once again, soften those hips. So just let those hips go, let the legs go. Draw the shoulder blades back. Just another opening of the front body, nice and gentle. Big, deep inhale. Stick your tongue out. You can even take your gaze towards your third eye so the eyes are kind of up and almost cross. Inhale, deeply stick out your tongue. One more. And feel free to do your final resting pose here on your belly, if that feels good to you. It's always kind of different. Or you can roll over onto your back. Take any last little bit of movement that you need to. So maybe it's a little twisting. You can even twist here 
um, on your side, just maybe it's a little just uh, like a beached whale pose, a little side to side, if you like, especially if you'd like to stay on your belly, or if you bring that top knee forward, back, shoulder back, just nice and gently, but press up and out so you're not collapsing into the shoulder too much. And whenever you're ready, if you're doing Shavasana on your belly, you can just rest your cheek to the floor. You can rest your forehead, whatever feels best to you. It may not be comfortable at all, and that's fine. Just come to your final resting pose, <clears throat> whatever that looks like for you. And once you've landed there, take a big, deep inhale. Fill up the belly, let the breath travel all the way to your crown of your head. As you exhale, exhale out of an open mouth. And plan to give yourself as much time here as you need. And when you're ready to come out of your savasana, do so slowly, moving into each fingers, toes, moving really slowly into the bigger muscle groups. But I'm just going to leave you to rest in savasana. I'm going to leave you with my code today. It says, if we don't slow down, be still and listen. The noise of not enough will steer us away from the beauty and mystery of right now. I thank you so much. Give yourself as much time as you need in this rest and come out of it slowly and softly.